Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and Lesson 32 and 33 are from the video called Money. I translated it from the French Argent, and it details the problems that were caused after the crash in Argentina. And in the next lesson, it'll be the solutions with the creditos. The video Money starts with a quote by Henry Ford. If the people really understood the process of monetary creation, the system wouldn't last 24 hours. Well, I don't mind monetary creation. It's the extra debt from interest that bothers me. Man in the movie screaming, thieves, thieves, give us back our savings. I saved for 42 years to find myself with nothing. My name is Mario Fernandez. My identity number is 5623325. 40 years of labor, sons of whores, what am I to live on? If I meet them in the street, I'll kill them. The narrator says, this is Isaac Izatan, from my peaceful middle-class salon in a rich country. I can't help thinking about another country. Argentina is in full financial crisis. The government, the banks are short of funds. On another continent, thousands of kilometers away, the same crisis is hit with the same scenes of desperation. In a bank in Turkey, a woman tried to torture herself. And there's a burnt woman screaming, We want our money! I've had enough! We want our money! In my peaceful middle-class salon in a rich country, I ask myself, how does money come to be in short supply? How can countries as rich as Turkey and Argentina find themselves on the brink of failure? To understand, I launched an inquiry, knowing without doubt that I'd discover the hidden face of money. It wasn't long ago when I was a student at home in Turkey that they taught us proudly that our country was one of the seven self-sufficient countries in the world. Agriculture was at the center of the government's preoccupation, and the land produced enough to feed and clothe the whole population. We even exported our surplus. Twenty-three years later, I find a nation that imports its agricultural products. <clears throat> in Argentina, professor of economics at the University of Buenos Aires, Claudio Katz, says, Every week a functionary of the IMF comes here to meet the government and dictate what it has to cut in the state budget. One day they cut an education, and the children find themselves without schools. Another day they cut in health, and it's the hospitals that go short for medications, antibiotics, the most elementary things. Another day they cut the housing programs, and it's a shortage of homes. There is therefore a systematic impoverishment of the country which arises from the repayment of this external debt. Hey, you owe it. The debt, you should pay it. It's only the usury you shouldn't have to pay. A teacher says, The children who attend the school live in the area. It's the poor quarter of Kilmas. It's hard to do good work when the teachers are badly paid and when the children have nothing to eat, when the parents don't have any work. It is me who brought these balls. I buy what I can. Here we get no more supplies. In class, the teachers have no chalk, no paper, no crayons. Teachers often scrounge in their wallets to buy what it takes to work with the children. Marcella, the majority of children arrive at school without having eaten. Some suffer nausea. And they can't start their classes while they haven't eaten. It's really terrible. We can't get anything done until 2 p.m. because they keep asking for the meal. They eat at school, and that's all, one time per day. Today it's pizza and milk and also math. We give each student a portion, then take more if there's any left. What's left at the end of the day is shared between the children of the first cycle. They take it home for their brothers and sisters. Uh, director of the school, Beatrice Ameri. The Argentine people are rich in fertile fields. We have here enough potable water to slake the thirst of the whole planet. You only have to drive 50 kilometers to find cows, fields where we grow wheat, rice, potatoes. How can a country so rich, which has never known war like Afghanistan, which is not handicapped by small size like Ecuador, suffer so much? I would never have imagined a few years ago that we could live under such terrible social and economic situation. Never. The children from here have no future. First of all, there's no work. Their parents are in need. Because of their elementary deficiencies, they won't develop well intellectually nor socially. It's unfortunate. I may be young, but I see no future. And that's what's the worst. It bothers me a lot. A little girl says, the problem is so bad in Argentina, right at this moment, people are dying of hunger. Those who live in the poor quarters eat rats and frogs. Beatrix, the external debt is important, eh, but not the interest. I suppose we have to find a way to pay it to preserve our relations with the rest of the world. The rest of the world's bankers. But it shouldn't be paid with the hunger of our children, right. 
In Argentina, a child dies every 50 minutes for lack of medical care or due to malnutrition. Wow. Everyone repeats that we have to pay the debt. They're going to finish by paying it with our blood because it's all that we have left. So, Argentine demonstration. Why are you banging on pots? Ch -ch -ch to protest. Why a pot? Precisely because it's empty. Whose fault is it? The government. Claudio Katz continues, Argentina impoverished itself due to the payment of the debt and privatizations. After four years of economic depression, businesses no longer managed to pay their debts. The banks, people who have less money, oh, yeah, to the banks, people who have less money at their disposal, in short, there's less money circulating in the country. At the end of last year, the banks were already in crisis. We saw a period of massive withdrawals of deposits, and people soon realized that the banks were going to fail and rush to empty their accounts. It's at that moment that the Cavello government imposed a Coralito, a measure which prevented depositors from getting their savings. Go to the bank, can't get your money no more. Why did the government do that? To save the banks. A distraught man goes, last year, one month before the Corralito, I sold my house to buy another. The money from my house is inside there. I reserved another house and wasn't able to buy it. And I also lost the deposit I put down on it. It's a theft, an official theft, and legal on the part of the banks. We trusted in them, we entrusted our money to them, and today they've taken our money and they call it Corralito. Now, for the record... Those credits can all be resurrected with the flick of a computer engineer's wand. They really didn't go anywhere far that they can't be got back. So Katz continues, last year $20 billion left the country. $20 billion. It's an impressive number. The banks are in a liquidity crisis and at the same time there's $20 billion flight of capital. Today the government should remind the banks of their commitments to their depositors who entrusted their money. Oh yes, remind them. And the bank should react by bringing back the money from offshore. Yeah, and spreading the unemployment and pain in the other countries. We're talking about banks like Citibank. They're going under. The Bank of America, the Scotia Bank, a Canadian bank. But the banks wash their hands of it. They say it's not their responsibility and quit the country. Why not? The government said they could close their accounts and take off and write off those debts. Buenos Aires, Exchange Bureau, why are all these people buying dollars? Because they don't have any more confidence. Everybody buys dollars. Why? Because it peso's worth nothing now. You have more confidence in it than the peso. Sure, we no longer have any choice. What will you do with those dollars? I don't know, we'll put them in our mattresses. It's safer than the banks. Don't talk to me about it. Now, Professor Chosudovsky, Ottawa U, tells us the peso no longer exists. Finally, it's dollars. Well, he doesn't know about creditos that were going on under his nose, right? If the government wants to increase the monetary mass in pesos, it can only do it by indenting itself in dollars. So, they can't issue a peso to mobilize resources that are already in place. Luckily, the creditos were mobilizing the resources that were already in place. They can't, uh, which means that they can no longer have control over the economy in the final analysis. While the people who were issuing the credit toast did allow them to have control over their economy in the final analysis, which he didn't know about. Uh, so that's dollarization, and that puts the economy completely in the bag, except if you know about credit toast. Argentina, finally, Mr. President, this is a member of Parliament saying, as it is clear that the situation won't change, I suggest to those responsible to at least have the honesty to lower the national flag and continue governing under this flag, and she raises the U.S. flag, as if it's America that's the problem and not the loan shark bank system. So, aiming at the wrong bad guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We sing our nation's anthem because it's a song which unites all of the Argentine people, which speaks of sovereignty, equality, all the liberty. In these days, we are oppressed economically and politically. We cry out for our soul. Long live Argentina! From someone who doesn't know what to do in Parliament. And a professorial demonstrator. And that's the good thing about a crash in a rich country. The... the Broke people aren't the bums you usually expect who've been bums and broke a long time. Brand new broke people, still got nice clothes. This guy looks like a professor. And he comes out of the crowd going, Argentinians, come out of your houses, occupy the streets, abandon your work until the political class founders. Boy, what a stupid thing to do. Sounds like Ayn Rand's Atlas who shrugged, you know. Quit working until they let you have your system back. Argentinians, it's now or never, right to the last. No answer, but stop the work. That's a really bright suggestion. Now, a politician, probably the Prime Minister or President, says, I announce that the Argentine state suspends the payment of the external debt. 
The Argentinians demand a change. They demand a response. They demand that the social question be at the center of the preoccupations of the state. We came here today to raise this challenge. Uh, the narrator continues, That day I rejoice with the Argentinians, convinced of the profound illegitimacy of a debt where the game of interest on interest continues to expand while the country bleeds itself white. Three days later, the president was forced to resign. 